Hi everybody, my name is Rainer and this is my channel Rainier Books. Today I give you a review of this beautiful novel, Cocoon, by Zhang Yiran. This is a very special novel. I like the cover art, I like the typo script, but I very much like the content and it's the content that really captivates us in this book. Zhang Yiran, she is translated in this novel that is published by World Editions by Jeremy Chang, who has translated about 15 to 20 novels from Chinese. He himself is an author. Zhang Yiran, the author, is in her early 40s. I think she's 42 or 41 years old. She is born in the early 1980s in a time when China had the policy of the one-child policy, the so-called one-child policy, which implied that every family was allowed to have only one child. Millions of families between 1980 and 2016 were allowed to have only one child. And a lot of families made abortions in order to get a boy because a boy is, or was at least in Chinese thinking, more valuable than a girl, which has led to the fact that today, in today's China, there's a huge number of men who are not capable or not, it's not possible for them to find a woman in China if they want to get married with a woman and start a family with, with, with them. So this is a great tragedy because so many people now have grown up with as only one child, without siblings, without aunts, without uncles, and it will be an everlasting consequence long in the future. And in the future, maybe somebody will write a novel that is primarily focused on this one-child policy. Zhang Yuran, she has written a story about three generations, about the grandfather, the grandmother, the father and mother, and the children, the children of the 1980s, and how much they are impacted by what happened earlier in China, what the government has, what the party has sort of put upon its people. In 1966, the so-called Cultural Revolution started in China, and it lasted about 10 years until the great leader Mao Zedong died. The Cultural Revolution meant that people were sent, lots of academics were sent, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, were sent from the cities where they had studied and where they were working to the rural parts of China to work as farmers in farms, because education was something that Mao, during the Cultural Revolution, Mao and his people sort of despised. Education was something bad, something that brought negative influences for the party, something that really endangered the revolution of China. And this cultural revolution led to many atrocities. People were beaten up, people were killed in this hate of education, this hate of good education. People were battered and killed and tortured at times, and also families started. And all this is somehow important for this book because the two characters in this book, we have two main characters, and this is Li Jaki and Chang Dong. A man, a woman and a man, Li Jaki is a woman and Chang Dong is a man, and they have been friends when they were children, they have been friends when they were teenagers, but then they sort of lost each other because Li Jaki went to Beijing and Cheng Dong stayed in the city of Jinan, which is about four or five hundred kilometers south of Beijing. There is something that connects the two families, not only the friendship between the two that has sort of um, a little bleaked out over the years, but what connects the family is the story also of their grandparents and their parents. The grandfather of Cheng Dong has been lying in a hospital in coma since 1967 when something happened during the Cultural Revolution. The grandfather was beaten up in a very bad way and when he, lie there, when he lay there very severely injured, somebody put a nail into his brain which sort of incapacitated him for the rest of his life and now he has been lying in hospital room number 317 for decade after decade. 
The grandfather of Lee Jaki is dying in the moment when the novel starts. That is our time, or almost our time. And Lee Jaki has returned from Beijing to Jinan to sort of take care of her dying grandfather and to say farewell, although she doesn't have the best relationship to her grandfather. But that's the point where Li Jiaqi and Cheng Dong meet again, and they sort of meet again, and they drink two bottles of wine under a whole night when they start talking to each other and telling each other stories of what happened after, uh, before and after Li Jiaqi left for Beijing, and they lost each other. And this story is captivating, it is very sad, it is a story of dysfunctional families, it is a story about Chinese history, and it is also a story about love. Li Jiaqi, if we even if we might sort of take her as the main protagonist, and um, uh, Cheng Dong as best supporting actor in a leading role as well, then both are telling us the stories. the The, the perspectives are always changing. First, we get Li Jiaqi, then Cheng Dong is telling us stories. Is telling. The other one stories, and that's the way we read through the novel. But love is a very important theme. The ability to love and how love can even survive if people, the people we love, change. And Jean Yuran has said that love was one of the core points for her. Is love really possible after all the inheritance of history that we get of our family history and also of the history of a nation? I'm really surprised that censorship in China has not forbidden this book for publishing. It was even published in China. I give you one example where I think Jean Yuran is very clear and very open. In what she's thinking, secrets become secrets and get hidden away because they have the capacity for destruction. That's what drew us to them, two kids who loved digging up secrets. It's hard to say what it was that suppressed our childhood creativity, but we couldn't create, only destroy. Or maybe it's because in this country, destruction is always seen as the highest form of creation. It felt exciting to light the fuse of a secret and blast a hole in the world. Such mysterious joy in the instant of explosion. I was hooked, and even if the thing lay buried close by, between the two of us, I would still detonate it. A moment's pleasure like taken revenge. Then I'd find myself standing in a shattered ruin. Your removal from my life might have seemed like chance, but I knew it was because of me because I hadn't taken sufficient care of our friendship. This is so intimate, this talk, this dialogue between the two, which is, which makes out the novel is so intimate and so clear and so beautiful and so full of everything that we humans are able to feel, that it makes it a universal work, not only a work about China. What does this tell us about the human condition? Does this tell us anything about the human condition? And I think, yes, this book tells us a lot about the human condition and how it can be impacted by things that happen and how it can sort of go on and on and on, that things are not forgotten. They keep carrying on and incidents and horrible incidents at times, like in this book, are having a strong weight on us, on our biographies, all of our lives. Li Jiaqi has a father who uh, was an academic, and during the Cultural Revolution, he was forced to go to the countryside and to work as a farmer, as an assistant to a farmer. And there he met Li Jiaqi's mother, who was very poorly educated. But in lack of other possible partners, the two of them got together, the academic and the not-so-good educated woman. They never really loved each other. The mother was very caring, but the father could never really accept his wife, and he also got divorced later on. And Li Jiaqi has also suffered among uh, of this relationship between her parents, because the father has also regarded her with the same eyes, like looking down on his daughter, like he looked down on his wife. And at the same time, Li Jiaqi is filled with love and the desire to sort of get the love and attention of her father. So this, this novel is really um, a very beautiful picture of two dysfunctional families 
Nothing that makes you sad and depressed once you read the novel, but one that makes you aware of how history can have its toll on us everywhere. Thanks for watching this video. The next single review will come in a few days. Then I will review Jake Edelstein's book Tokyo Vice, An American in the Police Speed in Japan. Bye-bye. See you soon.